Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jacob Shorba, and today we're here to talk about some more rumors regarding the NFL Draft, and honestly, this isn't really even rumors. I shouldn't even call it that. This is what is actually happening right now, because we are hearing that the Jacksonville Jaguars have interest in players like Romo Dunze, which we talked about at the Combine, and now Malik Neighbors. From LSU, one of the top receivers in this class, and for some people, the top receiver in this class. Of course, you got Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm of the opinion he's number one. But Malik Neighbors in almost every draft class except for this one is going to be your number one guy. This is big news for Jacksonville to be interested. You take a look at the list of teams that have met with Malik Neighbors now that are interested in him, at least formally. You've got teams that are in striking range. You've got the Jets, who are probably going to have to move up a few picks. And once again, you have Jacksonville. They were looking at it for Romo Dunze. I'm sure the interest is still there. Now they're talking about it with Malik Neighbors. I think things are pointing to the idea that Jacksonville is very much interested in getting one of these top receivers. And I think as much as I doubt it happened, to some extent and that's more so maybe the pessimistic side of me talking where you know you've got a GM that does very clearly struggle to make trades happen he'll just say it takes two to tango and then we won't get the trade done even when it would help our team immensely even with that said and how I feel about it we do know that Jacksonville very much values getting a number one receiver they made a big trade for Calvin Ridley in the past they did that before they made their playoff run. They felt like it was a clear need for this team. That's why they invested so much in it. Obviously, things went south with that. He didn't stick around. They're going to get nothing out of it, most likely, which we'll probably talk about in our next video um, because there is some updates on the compensatory pick that we could have possibly got for that. But it's clear that the Jaguars want to get a wide receiver one. They're looking at Brandon Ayuk, and now potentially we're looking at the NFL draft to fill this need. So, very interesting news. Now, what you need to know about Malik Neighbors. Like I said, one of the best receivers that's coming out in a very long time. You look at his stats. I mean, you got games here. He's putting up 200 yards. In. He, I think he led all of college football, at least among the big schools, in receiving yards. He's a phenomenal route runner, super fast player as well. Ran the four threes, potentially... Might have even been the 4-2s from what I heard. But just a phenomenal player. And when I watched him at first, and I'm not saying he's going to be at this level because it is a lofty projection, but he reminds me of Justin Jefferson. Maybe it's just the LSU uniform that's totally possible. That is my comp for him coming into the NFL. We'll see how it goes, obviously. It doesn't always work out, right? But I think Malik Neighbors is one of these players that it's near impossible to miss on. And so I would love to see Jacksonville make a trade up the board to try to get one of these top three. I think they're the safe ones. After that, you got a little bit of debate, at least in my mind. You know, the, Brian Thomas Jr. is a player that, as much as there's a ton of potential, he's still very green at this point. And A.D. Mitchell, you know, they've had some questions about him. You know, production never really got to the level you wanted. He takes some plays off. You know, I'm not super concerned about it, but I think you have more potential for that to be a miss far more than you would for one of these top three guys. So it's really interesting that we're seeing more stuff coming out now about Jacksonville potentially being interested in this kind of player. Now, to talk about Malik Neighbors, what is the cost? Where could they trade up? Just to give you an idea here, I think pretty clearly at this point, whether it's these players or not, first three picks are going to go quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. The question right now is that fourth pick. Because as much as I think like we all should probably have expected the Cardinals to take Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't think it's going to happen. I think they're going to move out of this pick. I think a team like Minnesota probably moves up here realistically to get J.J. McCarthy. And so I think that's probably what's going to happen. And then you look as well at the Los Angeles Chargers pick. You look at the capital that they currently have. I mean, they've got a decent amount, right? But this is a team that's had to overhaul. 
They're in salary cap hell. They've got to get new players. It would be a phenomenal opportunity for them to get Marvin Harrison Jr., but they might rather go after, you know, getting a bunch of receivers. Or maybe at this point, you know, it is a trade for Malik Neighbors. We'll have to see how the board falls. But I think the Los Angeles Chargers are a team that you could see us trade up with. That's going to be a team that's going to want more draft capital. They're already exploring trades for the pick. The Arizona Cardinals are as well. I think you get to pick six with the Giants. That's in their team that's considering it. The Tennessee Titans are, of course, we're not going to do it with the division rival. But all of these teams in this range where I think you got to move up are willing to move back. And so we just got to see, really, if Trent Baalke is going to get anything done. And if he does, I'd expect it on draft night, if I'm being straight. I don't think this happens before April 25th. I happen. I think it happens on April 25th if it takes place. As far as what you might have to give up, if they want to move up for one of these players, I think it probably happens with the Chargers or maybe the Giants. Now, I did think about this earlier when someone brought it up. There is the question of would Trent Baalke be able to get a trade done with Jim Harbaugh, who obviously is someone he did not have a good relationship with back in San Francisco. At the end of the day, whether or not you think that impacts it, both sides think they're winning the trade, right? Both sides think they're getting something great from the other and they're winning it. So, you know, even if Jim Harbaugh doesn't like him, he might make a trade with him thinking, well, you know, maybe I'm getting your first round pick next year and I'm ripping you off, you know, whether or not that's true. I think they would still consider it just because I think that could be their mindset if they do harbor bad feelings towards him. But as far as what you're talking about, I think you're probably looking at a first round pick swap, obviously. You're looking at a round one pick next year, not not the Chargers, my bad, Jacksonville's. And you see, like, that still kind of doesn't get us to that point. I think you got to offer something relatively decent. Um, you've got to offer more than just two firsts. I think you're looking at maybe a pick 48, maybe the second rounder next year, or maybe you're throwing in two thirds. I think realistically, that's the kind of trade that gets it done to move up in the draft and go get one of these top guys. Now we'll have to see what happens. I think it's very similar for both of this team, both of these teams. Maybe the Cardinals, you got to give up a little bit more when you look at the trade last year that they did to get Will Anderson to the Texans. I think Houston ended up giving up two first rounders. They gave up a second and then it was a future third and they got a fourth in return. We're moving up from a farther back spot. Technically not up to three, up to four this time. But I think regardless, you have the same kind of really good football player, right? And so it's going to cost Jacksonville quite a bit to move up. But as far as is it worth it, I think this is a good outcome. I'll say that. Maybe you could have a better one if you make these four picks. But if we're being realistic and we're talking about what's actually going to happen with these picks, I think you got to look at the draft history. You got to look at the players that Jacksonville's been bringing in. And so, you know, take our last two first rounders Anton Harrison, Devin Lloyd. Okay. Those two players substitute them here. Pick 48, take your last second rounder, Brendan Strange. Third rounder next year, take your last third rounder, Tank Bigsby. So the question would be essentially would you take one of these top three receivers in return? For Anton Harrison, Devin Lloyd, Brendan Strange, Tank Bigsby. I think that's how I'd look at it, and I think that's very debatable, right? Because Anton's a great player, Devin Lloyd's good, Strange isn't that great, right? You're going to have a miss in there. And Bigsby's a backup running back. You know, I think he has a role on this team. I think they'll be able to use him well once that offensive line gets going better on the interior. But it's not a huge factor in this, right? So that's really what I'm looking at this for I'm looking at what kind of players would we be giving up you know what is the talent that we usually are getting at this point and this is clearly a team that has done much better on day one than day two and day three so I look at that I consider the track record for Trent Baalke for Doug Peterson not good with receivers the top three are very hard to miss on if they want to move up if they want to get one I feel a lot better about that so very interesting news We'll see if anything comes of this, right? 
Um, it did get confirmed as well f from E. Dilla. I think this is something that is important to look for. I usually try to check him and see what he's saying about things. He's very reliable with this stuff. So, you know, it's good to hear. But we'll see what happens. Might just be investigating. Might not come to fruition. But they're still looking at it. So, I appreciate you guys watching, being here with me. We'll have some more videos coming out here soon. Got a fun mock draft coming up on Friday. But that's all I've got for you today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And finally, go Jags.